Okay. Hi. Uh, welcome to the last talk of the day. So, yeah, uniformity analysis is something we want to use to replace the existing divergence analysis in LLVM. Uh, there are twofold motivation. One is that the current divergence analysis does not support irreducible CFGs. So we extended that and we are calling it uniformity analysis now. The current divergence analysis basically just gives up when it sees an irreducible CFG and assumes that all values are non-uniform. But that's not really necessary. We can't do better than that. And the second is that we do not have an implementation for machine IR for divergence analysis. So what we did was the uniformity analysis is now implemented as a C++ template that works with both LLVM IR and machine IR. So that's, a, that's something we have been waiting for in the AMD GPU backend at least. We needed an analysis there. So overview. Yeah. So uniformity of values is very closely related to convergence of threads. So we'll talk about that most of the time. Uniformity itself is just a small part of it at the end. Uh, to define convergence of threads, we start with uh, the notion of static and dynamic instances of operations. And we define, a, we introduce a relation called converged with between dy dynamic instances. And there is a particular instance of the relation called maximal convergence that we are interested in. Uh, so we'll be going through all of those things and using maximal convergence, uh, which is defined on dynamic instances, which is a property of the execution. We raise that to static instances for a static analysis uh, as a property called M converged static instances. Uh, yeah, and finally, using m converged static instances, we propose a definition of uniformity that works with irreducible control flow graphs. So, this analysis is very similar to the existing divergence analysis. So, I've put that up as a reference for that. The implementation looks quite the same, except for a place where we do a more iterative search for uh, your divergent values. Uh, so, okay, convergence and uniformity, very closely related concepts. The conventional picture that everybody has in their mind is that threads start off as converged until they diverge at a, at a divergent branch. And diverged, then, the diverged threads eventually reconverge at some common program point later in the program. Uh, convergent operations require certain threads to execute them convergently. There are many different uses of the same word converge happening here. So we will not be looking at convergent operations, but they are important and it's always in the backdrop for all these things. Convergently executed operations produce uniform values. These are not convergent operations. These are operations that happen to be executed convergently. They are the ones that produce uniform values that we can actually analyze and uh, de detect. Conditions apply. It depends on the operation that is being executed. The value computed by different threads is uniform. Uh, is defined to be uniform if it is the same across those threads. So it's it's sensitive to the scope of threads that we are talking about. But in this analysis, we uh, take the scope as the universal set of all the threads that are executing the same program. And otherwise, the value is divergent, which means if it is different for different threads, then it is a divergent value. And a branch is uniform or divergent if its condition is uniform or divergent. So I put all those terms together in a single table. So a thread, a threads can be converged or diverged. Communication is convergent or independent. Values are uniform or divergent, and branches are uniform or divergent. So, yeah, dynamic instances. So we need the notion of dynamic instances to define what convergent operate, convergent execution means between threads. So to start with, a static instance is an occurrence of an instruction in a program source. For example, if this CFG is a program, then H, B, L are different static instances of some instruction. Uh, a dynamic instance is each execution of a static instance. For in, example, in the table below, H1, H2, H3 are all executions of the same node H. So they are labeled differently because each is unique. A convention which we'll use here in, in these slides is that a table like this shows a different potential executions of the same program. Each row is one thread executing that program. And it, it produces a sequence of dynamic instructions. And, uh, Dynamic instances from different threads are listed in the same column if and only if they are converged, right? pending a definition of what converged means. So convergence uh, defined using dynamic instances. It's, it's a combination of two relations. First is a converged with relation which relates dynamic instances of the same static instance produced by different threads. So convergence makes sense only when you're talking about across threads. Yeah. Convergence within a thread is not so useful. It's a transitive symmetric relation. Uh, 
there is no single definition for it we are going to choose a definition that suits our purpose which is usually to match the execution of the target so that we can reason about how a program is being executed on that target so there is, there, are, there can be many converged with relations and we will pick one which suits us convergence before is a order established by the converged with relation it's so when two dynamic instances are converged convergence before relates other dynamic instances in the corresponding threads it's a transitive uh, strict order uh, so here's an example in the table again there are some threads executing a program the orange arrows double arrows represent converged with relationship so q1 and q2 are converged with each other s1 and s2 are converged with each other since p occurs before q1 in the same thread it is said to be convergence before q2 in the other thread similarly q r occurs after q2 in the same thread so q1 is now said to be convergence before r that's how the uh, converge convergence before relation jumps from one thread to the next so transitively we have p as convergence before t which is in a further thread far away so these are the two relations we use maximal convergence like i said there is no one converged with relationship that we can define fundamentally in a program it, it depends on the execution that we are interested in so a typical expectation is that threads should converge as often as possible uh, which means that they should converge at a convergent operation uh, they should also converge at the header of a cycle where a cycle is a generalization of the natural loop uh, except that it is allowed to be irreducible and they should also converge at a post dominator if these are all should should expectations it's not necessary that it's always true the other expectation is that when converged threads enter a cycle those th some of those threads may divergently exit the cycle in different iterations but all the threads that enter the cycle must finish that cycle before reconverging outside the cycle so that is typically how we would schedule operations on a amd gpu for example uh, this is formally captured as the maximal convergence relation it's suitable for existing targets that we know of it it's compatible with the convergent attribute which is the one which identifies convergent operations in llvm ir and it works with irreducible cfgs so informally uh, we'll try to figure out what the, the shape of the con maximal convergence relationship should look like so here's an example of a program which has two nested irreducible cycles with headers r and s so the outer cycle has header r and the inner cycle has header s and there are these two threads which uh, have an example uh, execution of the same program uh, what we expect is that uh, dynamic instances in the same iteration whatever that means are converged with each other right so for example p1 is converged with p2 uh, which are dynamic instances of the same static instance p but not with p4 because p4 is in a different iteration of the cycle nest similarly s3 is not converged with s4 because they are in different iterations so uh, yeah but the one thing i missed to say was that executions of the headers mark iterations of the cycles so the green column is the starting point of one iteration of the outer cycle and the orange column is a starting of one iteration of the inner cycle and so on so these are this is what we need from the converged with relation that uh, uh, dynamic instances from different iterations are not related in converged with so formally what we what that really means is that p1 is not converged with p4 because of the header r2 in this case the dynamic instance of the header r2 in this case which precedes p4 uh, in the same thread but not but it is not convergence before p1 which is in the other thread this is the same as actually turns out to be the same as saying that they are not in the same iteration Uh, similarly uh, we could have said that s2 is the reason that p1 and p4 are, are not converged and we would not be wrong that is also okay similarly s3 and s4 are not converged because of that dynamic instance s r3 which which is which precedes s4 in the same thread but it it does not precede s3 in convergence before order so so within the same thread we are we are interested in just program order but across threads we look at convergence order instead so as long as there is a dynamic instance of a header which satisfies this requirement those dynamic instances are not converged so that the, so that's the defi formal definition in the third bullet that dynamic instances x1 and x2 are converged if and only if there is no dynamic instance of some header such that the dynamic instance precedes one uh, uh, dynamic instance say x1 in the same thread 
but does not precede the other instance uh, in convergence before order. This is our definition of what convergence, uh, maximal convergence is, which is a converged with relationship that we can use for defining convergent operations, converged operations. So all that is nice, but we have a problem with irreducible CFGs, right? So this works, the, the definition works, but with irreducible CFGs, the problem is that the same control flow graph can be resolved in different ways in, in different cycle hierarchies. So we have the same program here, but it's resolved into a different nest of cycles. There are two possible ways to do it. The first one has a single cycle with header P, but the second one has two nested cycles with header R and S, the ones that we saw before. So in case one, the header P is the one which is governing convergence. So we have the solid dotted line around dynamic instances of P1, which are marking iterations of the single cycle. And we see that uh, R1 and R2 are not converged because of say the dynamic instance P4, which, which causes the same problem as earlier, that it precedes R2 in the same thread, but does not precede R1 in the uh, converged with relationship, the convergence before relationship. But for the same program, when it is analyzed differently, we have the second case where now the headers are S and R, and they are the ones tracking the iterations. So this time R1 and R2 are converged and S1 and S2 are not converged. So the difference here is that they're actually the same threads with the same trace of dynamic instances. The difference is that because there are two cycles, when both threads enter the second cycle, one of them, thread one came out, but it has to wait for thread two to also come out and then converge in column six there for the, at the header of the outer cycle. Because of this, the, the alignment of those same dynamic instances has changed and the converge with relationship has changed. This is what happens with irreducible control flow graphs. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, now we have a notion of what converged with, uh, what maximal convergence we are looking for. But uh, to deal with irreducible control flow graphs, we need to raise this to a static analysis where we say that, uh, where we determine whether uh, a given operation is always converged or not, whether its dynamic instances are always converged or, or not, independent of how the program is executed. So a static instance is said to be M converged if and only if its dynamic instances are converged in the same way in every cycle hierarchy. So no matter how we analyze the CFG, if the converged with relation for that, for the dynamic instances of that static instance X is, remains the same, then that X itself is said to be M converged. For reducible CFGs, this is simple. There is a unique loop hierarchy and all static instances are, are always M converged. So for example, in, uh, in the previous case, there was, we had those two different loop uh, cycle hierarchies so none of those nodes are M converged. For irreducible CFGs, it could be safe to just say that they are never M converged, but we did come up with uh, one criterion where we can say that certain instances inside an irreducible cycle are M converged. Uh, that criterion is based on closed paths in the CFG and it is independent of cycles. It's a property of the CFG only, which, which is good because cycles are, are implementation defined. So finally, with once we have this notion of what converged M converged means, we can now define what uniformity means in a static analysis of the CFG. If a static instance is not M converged, then the outputs of that operation are assumed to be divergent, which is pretty much what we have been doing so far. But this is an improvement now because uh, we have a notion of what M converged means. Uh, but if a static instance is M converged, then now it depends on the semantics of the operation. If the operation specifies that they're uniform, then, it is, then the outputs are uniform. Otherwise, the outputs are uniform if the inputs of the operation are uniform, except in the case of a phi node, because there, what happens at a phi node is that uh, different threads conver may converge at the same phi node. And if they happen to choose the same incoming value, then the produced output value is also uniform. So this second bullet is what the divergence analysis currently does, uh, except when the control flow graph is irreducible, in which case, it gives up and says that everything is uh, divergent. So this is what we have implemented in the uniformity analysis. Uh, it's, it's been put up as an RFC for quite some time now. Uh, it is a template, like I said, which works on both LLVM IR and machine IR. It's, the implementation is pretty much the same as the divergence analysis, except we add the, added this notion of M-converged uh, static instances in that. It, it's known to pass all divergence analysis test cases. It passes new tests written for reducible, irreducible control flow graphs. And we have 
worked on a lot of machine eye tests uh, so far. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Amir. We can take up questions now. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, generic question on the, the implementation. So you mentioned earlier there are certain instructions that are basically kind of convergent by nature, like a barrier, like a sync thing, right? right. Where yeah. does it does the analysis take that into account at all? Uh, it does not need to. It's not changing anything, right? So, I mean, but uh, you could use that as additional input, like basically uh, use that as a way to determine certain things are like impossible, like certain yeah. paths are impossible. Yes, because we could do that. Otherwise, too. it would be UB or you would be stuck. I mean, yeah. Assuming yeah. that is UB, which I don't. Yeah, we, we do not do that yet. All right. cool. If no more questions, then thank you, Samir. Uh, the sessions have ended for the day. Please join for the reception located in the Edenville Ballroom. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.